Game on. This grand final is on the way. Yeah, so, a few things that we could work on there, hey. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. So today we're going to be looking at Vogon Poetry, my overhead saw robot in the 150 gram ant weight category. And uh, it's been doing pretty well, but there's still just a few little nitpicks that I kind of want to work out and see if we can fix entirely and the first one of those is the self-writing and we've already worked on this a little bit so in front of me here i have two different iterations of the self-writing arm we have the original and then we had the one that i ran at robot havoc and as you can see we've kind of upgraded this already so the first time around these things were tiny spindly and flimsy and a single shot would break them fairly easily in fact i can just snap this with my bare hands if i really want to so not great the second time round, or at Robot Havoc, we had these thicker ones, and they are better, but they're still easy enough to break. And the other problem I had too, was that with them actually plugged in, if I can get this one in, uh, you can get into a position where their robot is stuck like that. If it was bolted in, it would stay stuck like that. And the robot was basically high-sided on itself because the uh, support arm here was stuck underneath the robot which wasn't a good look essentially it just did not help and yeah essentially closing up meant that you were still stuck on top of the self-writing stick it basically just stayed there the whole time and you opened and closed on top of it and nothing really happened at that point so this geometry and rigidity is wrong because with the whole robot on it it does flex a little bit in the direction that it bends. Uh, so today we're gonna try some different iterations of this. First of all, we have an iteration that is designed to stop the stick from happening. So this one, it's essentially the same thing, but we've now got this extra self writing stick off the side. Uh, and this is also just a little bit thicker. It's a couple of mil thicker, which will hopefully help it uh, survive. So that's bolted in now, which means that we can actually have a look and see how this works. So as you can see, it's more unstable in the upright position, which will mean that it's gonna touch a wheel a lot better, which we should be able to use to get ourselves out of position. Now, if we're like this and we close, Oh yeah, we're now on one wheel fully, pretty much, which should mean that we'd be able to like flick ourselves back over this way, hopefully. I'm not as sure, but this should actually work pretty well. Uh, giving that extra self-riding arm on there means that it's a lot less stable in that position that we saw before, which is realistically what we want. We run it, don't want it to be stable like this or like this. This is not very stable like this at all, which is perfect because we'll get onto a wheel one way or another. Awesome. Uh, the other option we have is the long boy, <laughs> which this is designed basically to stop the whole robot from wheeling because that was the other problem that I was having is when the arm is raised to its maximum height, it can wheelie really easily and the self-riding arm at the moment allows a lot of wheelie. And here we go. This is the long boy in place. And in actual fact, the robot is touching the long boy at the moment with the arm raised that far. So this is gonna be a supremely good anti-wheelie device, uh, especially when the server was powered and doesn't move around. You'll see that we hit that fairly early and we don't get a whole lot of tip on this. The next question, of course, is how well does it go tucked under the robot? Mm, I'm not sure about that. That could actually be a problem potentially. It's just a lot of that to try and like, um, yeah, close around and stuff. Uh, but we'll also need new wheels. So that's the next thing to talk about is uh, we need to talk about these wheels. Like so, and this here, well, in actual fact, these 
are a similar weight, but one is a whole lot easier to do and they should have similar amounts of traction. So yeah, we're gonna run with these wheels for the time being. I do have a second one, which I'll get some O-rings on here in half a second. All right, I'm gonna get the electronics fixed up so that we can try some self-writing tests. Okay, so here we go. We have some repairs made and we have the robot on. I will say before we get going, I have disconnected the drive motor up here, the actual weapon motor, the whole ESC is completely disconnected. I would prefer to not have a saw on it at all, but I need to have the weight there so that I know what the weight does as we try and move around here, because that's very important uh, going ahead. So I'm trying, I'm as safe as I can be while also testing in a really realistic and reliable manner. Uh, I could throw all of this system into the test box, but I do just want to be able to like keep positioning it and putting it in different spots and seeing how it goes in different self-writing modes. So I'll say for the first instance though, that this, uh, the long boy is actually pretty good. So if we raise the saw up to maximum height, it touches the ground, which means that the wheels don't quite touch the ground, uh, but it also means that we cannot wheelie at this point. Uh, like taking off, we are never gonna be able to wheelie because we're so close to the ground with the long boy that it's just not gonna happen. Uh, now, the other thing is if we are fully down and closed up and we tilt back, doesn't take much with the long boy to flip back over. However, having said that, if we go all the way up again and do the thing that we were doing before, which I really probably should have put the top plate on here before attempting all of this, but that's okay, it should be fine. If we sit up like this with the robot, actually we're gonna go the other side so you can maybe see what's happening a little bit better. Put some duct tape on this in just a second. Um, we're sitting on the arm and we've got, well we're sitting on the self right and we've got the arm down. We can move a little bit, not very much, it's not very good. Uh, and then if we try self riding, we don't get very far which is not great. This is the type of issue that we were trying to avoid in the first place. Uh, so I do have an idea that I'm just gonna quickly try, and that is the long boy has extra slots in it so that we can add a little crossbar here. And this crossbar is just to give us a little bit of extra width on the, the tip of the arm, which hopefully will change the dimensions of it and mean that the self riding is a little bit better. Fortunately, this video is a little bit annoying because if you guys have any suggestions on better self-writing arms, uh, I, this video is gonna go out after I have already finished this month's competition. So whatever changes you suggest, we'll have to go in for the next competition and not for this one. Anyway, this is our new arm bar set up. So let's have a look at this. Uh, upside down again, we're gonna do it the same way so that you all can see. Uh, oh, I don't know about that. It might not have really worked. Let's see. Ignore the guts spewing absolutely everywhere. Mm. Okay. So that's very annoying. All right, let's try the uh, the fork and see if the fork is any better at this. We don't touch the ground, which is a little bit of a problem. Uh, now let's do the quick servo. Yep, so we do self write on the servo at maximum arc. We could probably almost get away with running this self writer a little bit longer, because as you can see, it takes basically all the servo movement there to get back up uh, into a self rider position, which is a little bit of a problem, realistically. Now, arm all the way up, robot upside down, like so. Can we get out of this position, actually? Let's do it this side so you can see. So if we go in. All right, so we can drive a little bit better. Mm, no. Mm hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. All right, 
we do the other side. Let's see if we do the other side. Oh, hello. Sitting higher there, but it doesn't look like it's actually going to help us. Hmm. I'm marking up my table. Ah, okay. The geometry on this is very, very, very weird. I almost think what I actually need is I need this here, but I need it down here. I need this up kick all the way down the back here. And the reason I say that is because at the moment, our self riding happens like there we're stable and here we self ride. So we need to be touching the ground on this point. But what I reckon is if we have a curve like this, when it's tucked underneath, like so, if that curve is out here, we might get a case of guiding up the curve, maybe. I don't, <laughs> this is, it's an odd thing to think about. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we do this and then that. Nope. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that does not help at all, does it? I really, <sighs> that's the problem. I have kind of two conflicting things that I need this to do. One is to be able to self write from this position, which this thing can't at this point. Although, mm, yeah, no, it, it just can't at this point. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, however, bigger wheels might fix that problem. As long as we've got something should fix that. The question is, how do we get back up from this position? That's the, that's the kicker, really. Okay, so here's the idea. It is no self-riding stick at all. If we do this, if we had bigger wheels, oh, if we had bigger wheels, we might be able to do this, and that would literally just need to be very, only very slightly bigger, too. Like, it just... They just need to grip that little bit better to be able to throw the whole robot back the other way. It's going to be a bit of a driving maneuver to try and do that, though, I think is the problem. Mm. For experimentation's sake, I have cheated and just thrown a second or a third bigger O-ring around the outside of the two smaller O-rings that are already here. Now, let's see if we go fully upside down. We'll do this, we're off on our wheels. Now, can we? Oh. <laughs> okay, not easily self right. However, having said that, this particular system should allow a wall self right, drive up to a wall and up correctly which would mean no need for a self-riding stick because it doesn't matter. All we need to do is when we go upside down, because upside down we've only got one wheel touching the ground until we sit like this, and then we need to drive this section into a wall. That's it. Okay, that could be what we need to do. I just need to print bigger wheels so that they basically weigh less because at the moment we're running three o-rings which does add a lot of weight and also yeah we want two of the bigger ones rather than one big one and two small ones while printing is happening let's talk saw blades and specifically these custom saw blades that i got cut in time for robot havoc now at that event I used the 80mm and the 50mm versions of this saw blade and found that they dug in and bound more than I was expecting, especially as the tooth profile was copied directly from the manufactured bought ones that I had uh, previously been using. And in the comments of that video you all were suggesting a bunch of different things and the two things that kind of caught me were the fact that the larger diameter is probably going to mean a larger leverage angle, which means more torque needed from the brushless motor. So running the 80s and the 100s means that we just don't have the torque output anymore to cut through things, which is bad. Uh, but then also the 50mm one, the problem here could be 
I think it's teeth keying is what's it, what it's actually called. And that is where if you look at a conventional saw blade, the teeth don't line up with each other exactly. One goes one way and one goes the other way. But the bend is fairly slight. But what this means is when you cut into something, the cut is not the thickness of the blade or the thickness of the steel interior, it's the thickness of the teeth. So rather than you cutting a 0.6 mil slot with a 0.6 mil thick blade, what you're actually cutting is a one mil thick slot with a 0.6 mil blade. And what this does for you is it means that your blade itself, the actual metal pieces, don't bind up in the cut and only the teeth actually touch the cut, which is probably a good idea. So uh, in aid of trying to do something like that, I've printed a little jig. This here is going to hold this particular 50 mil saw blade. We're going to bolt this whole thing together and we're going to bend the teeth just ever so slightly. It's left just the teeth exposed here. We're gonna bend all of these just ever so slightly, one one way, one the other, alternating back and forth all the way around the blade. And then we're gonna try and cut something with it and see if it still binds up Wow, so that worked. I mean, it still uh, grabs and digs into the plastic a little bit sometimes, but the holes that I am getting out of this new modified saw blade are nasty, nasty. Uh, this is literally the one that I've just bent the teeth back and forth a little bit on. It took like, I don't know, two or three minutes to bend all these teeth back and forth, which it's not a huge amount, it is a little bit of time and effort, but eh, whatever, that's fine. Especially considering we now get huge nasty cuts. We were getting kind of like thinner ones before and these things are wide and gross. That's really, really cool actually. <laughs> uh, so I think this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna modify a couple more blades up uh, just to make sure that we've got all of or and a couple of options for that. And also it means that, yeah, I'm gonna be running these, I think exclusively at the event rather than running the pre-made ones because yeah, I think this is gonna work quite nicely as it turns out. Obviously I also now need to clean the whole robot up because uh, there is literally powdered pieces of uh, plastic everywhere inside the robot now. <laughs> So we had a slight change of plan on this one. Instead of printing wheels, I've actually printed a top plate because we might be getting into a saw off in the next event. So I kind of wanted something a little bit better than the very thin piece of plastic I had been running. So I printed that. And instead of printing wheels, we've got the Pololo wheels, which actually I've stolen off of Mini Mammoth. Mini Mammoth is going over to O-Ring Drive for this event and uh, we're using the Pololos on here because I realized that the Pololos are actually the grippiest thing I own and also quite light. So they fit inside the weight limit quite nicely. Uh, so yeah, there we go. This is Vogon Poetry's form going into this next event. Hopefully uh, all the changes here make a lot of difference. And that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.